artificial intelligence. AI. 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 AI has been a hot topic recently, and probably will be until the end of history. But let's focus specifically on AI art. As AI hones its skills, as more and more dollies, mid journeys, night cafes, stable diffusion, and a recent, you know, Lenza AI, the one you're seeing all over your Instagram pop up, recreating what looks like real digital art with artificial intelligence. What does this mean for the future of the artist? Can the flesh and blood artist be replaced by a few beeps and boops? Let's figure this out. Let's get specific. Before we unpack the philosophical side of this question, let's technically define AI. Let's specifically define AI. So I asked my real flesh friend, Duncan, who has a background in this, to help us define AI. Hi, it's me, Duncan, from the YouTube channel Duncan, here to give you a quick rundown of what the heck machine learning even is. For a machine to learn things, computer scientists sort of base their models on human neural networks in the brain to create artificial neural networks, or AMs. In its most basic form, you have a bunch of inputs, which are each connected to nodes in a hidden layer in the middle, which then connect to nodes in the output layer. Each connection usually has a weight that determines the strength of the connections between the nodes, and each node usually has a bias value. You compute the value of the next node by taking the value, the bias term, the weight, and sticking them all through an activation function, like the signal. This continues through all the neurons until you get to the output layer, which is what the program actually generates. The connection weights are usually selected randomly, but then slowly adjust over time based on how good or bad the output is. There are loads of variations of these kinds of models. You got recurrent neural networks, like reinforcement learning, like and bi-directional multi-carlo maps. It's a big field. But the most popular category of neural networks by far is deep learning. Turns out just having one layer sucks. If you add a bunch of extra hidden layers, you get way more sophisticated behavior. The AI image generators you know and love, like DALI or Stable Diffusion, use deep learning to generate images. For training data, they take a gargantuan set of images and captions from the internet. The model is trained on this data to the point that it effectively knows all the features associated with particular concepts. With this, along with some fancy natural language processing for prompts, it's able to generate brand new images, combining its quote-unquote knowledge of concepts and components. That's a little heavy-handed. That's a little loaded. I'm asking for a reason. The reason I'm asking is because any video I've seen talking about AI art so far fails to define what art is. Because there's obviously something we're all thinking about when we were like, I don't want AI to replace this. I'm worried about AI replacing this. What is this? What are we worried about AI replacing? And rather than define art into a sentence or into a, a concept, I've made a spectrum of objects, a spectrum of human creations. On the spectrum, on the one end, you have very functional human creations, the most functional of human creations. And on the other end of the spectrum, you have functionless human creations. I'm talking about the material realm here, okay? Materially, 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 materially functional, right? So on one end, let's say a chair, a chair, the platonic world of forms chair, and on the functional end you have something like a blank canvas painting like it just a, like not even anything on it there's not even a technical ability evolved something that we have championed before as art all human creations can fall on the spectrum and in between you have flags graphic design user interfaces landscape painting public sculpture furry porn now why am i laying out this spectrum because this spectrum is very helpful for us to figure out what are we worried about ai replacing as you march down that line from functional to functionless you get more and more uncomfortable with AI replacing that art. If you had to make the most unintentional table possible, there's not a single inch of human creative ability or problem solving in the creation of the table. It is just the most functional table imaginable. It's not upsetting to think of an AI replacing the human's role in the creation of that table. User interface. A user interface on a government website. The most plain Jane functional graphic design you could think of. What about logo design? It's like the Nike swoosh. Okay, the Nike swoosh is a meaningless symbol that now defines the identity of a major company that also defines Western culture. The Nike swoosh is a very important symbol. It's not going to be forgotten for a very long time. What if an AI creates the next most recognizable logo? See what I'm saying here? We're worried about AI replacing functionless art. Functionlessness defines being human. We are an animal species whose only concern should be feeding ourselves and reproduction and creating the means to do so. Owning a Rolex or writing capitalism and schizophrenia has nothing to do with that. And when we try to erase that functionlessness, the times in history when we started to distill humanity down to like some form of purity, 
some form of purely functional minimalism, that's when shit's gotten fucked up. I touch on this in my video about how to stop hating the left, where I talk about the right and Nazi Germany and Stalin's Russia and the woke movement. It's trying to distill humanity into like a pure hierarchy and everything that fits outside of their definition is irrational. When we start looking at humanity like a science or a math and we move away from irrational human creations like narratives and art and emotions, I think it will also be helpful to define what an artist is here. Basically, we're gonna take the same spectrum as before, but just replace the art on the spectrum with the artist who made it. And the same logic applies before, right? The most functional craftsman you can imagine creating the most functional chair is the most easily accepted to be replaced. At the other end, you have the fine artist. How we imagine a fine artist to be. Messy, completely non-conscientious, chaos man making art, right? We're the least comfortable with that idea of the artist being replaced. So, in regard to all of our definitions, all of the theory we've just gone through, what's the answer? Is AI going to replace the artist? AI won't replace art. AI cannot ever replace the artist because that idea of the artist is already dead. Art as we collectively understand it through academia and pop culture. When you think of art, the art that comes to mind, that version of the artist existed for 130 years. There's not really any set dates, but our modern conception of the artist begins with Gustave Courbet in France in the 1850s and ends with the neo-expressionist movement in the 1980s. Any conception you have of art now is a simulacra. It's, it's a repetition of that pattern. It's a repetition of that archetype because we think that archetype should keep existing. Societally, we define art by what we see in the white walls of galleries in New York and Paris and Los Angeles. Those are our cultural relics. Those are the objects that occupy the psychic space when we think of art. And from the 1850s to the 1980s, you have images and sculptures that become cemented in the cultural vernacular. If you watched my last video, the Western Art History tier list, I continue to prove that every art movement up until Gustave Courbet has an a priori assumption. It's a part of something. It's not a movement in itself, it's part of something. You have Christian art, you have art for the state, you have art for the emperor, you have religious art. It's never just, oh, I like this art for the principle of this art being good. It's always part of a larger picture. In France, as you, as you move into the French Revolution, the second French Revolution, this sort of ends with romanticism and neoclassicism during the first French Revolution. And you have Gustave Courbet, who is really the first artist to come along and just start creating things because he wanted to. He was expressing his individual will to create what he wanted to create. That is what defines modern art, and that will is what defines modernity. The individual will to create as an end in itself is carried through all the way through Impressionism, Neo-Impressionism, Cubism, Picasso, Surrealism, pop art. All the quintessential modern art movements in the Western canon follow that concept. So how does this die, and why is it different now? This dies in the 1980s, with its swan song artists being Basquiat and Keith Haring. This is the very beginning of a trend that is just commonplace now where artists have merchandise, where artists are a brand who make a specific design, a specific pattern, a specific idea that is bought and sold, and they produce that as a material good. With that, you enter the transition of art where it is today. And artists now get famous because their work sells for a lot, not because it's groundbreaking or captures some sort of aesthetic ideal, but because it's expensive. What they call red chip artists, artists that are up and coming, that are a bit risky to buy, and, it, and you, you create hype around the artist. With every year that passes, more and more new artists end up in Christie's art auctions with artists who are in their mid-20s with work selling for $10 million. It's just, it's too new to call how AI is going to change the visual landscape. AI replacing art as we know it now is the most boring outcome of this entire AI adventure. The idea of an AI just taking the place of cause or fuck Banksy, that's painful. That's absolutely painful. All we can hope for is that AI forces a future. AI forces a future we don't anticipate.